Fame can sometimes obscure what people are really like. A lot of people have different ideas about who they are due to the history of gossip and hearsay. Here is the list of 10 more misconceptions and false beliefs that are related to these famous names. Number 10. Michael Jordan. Widely regarded by most as the best basketball player of all time. Michael Jordan is a towering figure in the world of sports. The man has his own brand of shoes and can be seen selling undershirts in commercials now that he's retired from dominating a whole sport for years. Perhaps most importantly, he started in the 1996 film, Space Jam, while most might think that he appears to be a nice person. MJ actually happens to be a massive jerk by all accounts. It's been noted that he would throw teammate Bill Cartwright intentionally bad passes, and then complain about how he would miss them. He would also screen your loser. You've always been a loser. At Rodney McRae when they were on opposite sides of the scrimmage. When he moved to the Wizards, he regularly reduced Quain Brown to tears during practice. The most damning evidence of him not being the nicest person in the world, however, is his Hall of Fame acceptance speech, which is often described as the most bizarre and petty ever given. In it, he blasted everyone from his high school coach and teammate, his college coach, his college roommate, and even his own kids in perhaps the pettiest movable. The multimillionaire also complained that he had been charged for a ticket to the event. Number 9. Dr. Seuss. If you were born in America, there's a 25% chance that the first book you ever read was written by Theodore Geisel, known more widely as Dr. Seuss. He wrote over 60 children's books, and simply hearing his name, no doubt takes one back to simpler times of childhood to begin with he was not actually a doctor. But unless you plan on writing whimsical children's stories, you probably shouldn't just throw doctor on your resume. What's more interesting is that Dr. Seuss did not actually like children at all, and once said that they terrify me in an interview. His wife explained that he was always wondering, what might they do next? What might they ask next? Evidently, children's irrational behavior was something he didn't enjoy dealing with. Dr. Seuss was also an American propagandist during World War II and drew extremely racist caricatures of Japanese people to rally public support for the war. Number 8. John Lennon one of the most influential singer-songwriters of the past hundred years. John Lennon was a peace icon. He didn't just sing songs about love and unity, but was involved in various pro-peace political movements and paid for billboards with anti-war slogans on them in London and New York. In March of 1969, he and Yoko, his wife spent an entire week in bed to protest global conflict. Though it was unclear how this would solve anything as most people myself included, spent weeks in bed for no avail. While we're coming across as a stock pacifist opposing sending troops overseas, he was apparently not opposed to punching people and had somewhat of a violent streak, even once stated in an interview that when he was younger, I was a hitter, I couldn't express myself and I hit. I fought men and I hit women. He does not appear to have ever fully grown out of this attitude. The reason Yoko Ono would accompany him to ban practices one of the reasons often cited for the breakup of the Beatles was because he forced her to. He wanted her under his constant supervision, even making her accompany him to the bathroom. One person he did not care too much of was his son Julian, and he was absent for most of his life. Basically, deep down he wasn't much of the good guy. We're led to believe he was. Number 7. Steve Jobs This man is seen by many as one of the most important visionaries of the century. A business icon, credited with revolutionizing the tech industry. He is a household name on par with the likes of legends, such as Henry Ford. He's the reason hipsters have bought eight, nearly identical phones. Steve Jobs was also not someone you would really want as a co-worker. During his time in charge at Pixar, he fired employees without any notice when someone did eventually ask for the standard two weeks notice. He agreed, but it's said that the notice is retroactive from two weeks ago. He was also known to be a general jerk and would harass potential employees during interviews, reportedly asking one, how old were you when you lost your virginity and how many times have you taken LSD? When the interviewee attempted to respond, Jobs often made turkey noises at them. Go pluck yourself, Steve. Number 6. Mozart Wolfgang Matthias. Mozart is perhaps the most famous musician of all time. His music has been listened to and performed for the past 200 years. He began composing music at the age of five, and he was playing in front of European royalty by the age of 17. Mozart created over 600 works of music and has had an unparalleled influence on classical music. 
Few are aware, however, that Mozart had a bizarre interest in fecal matter. So much so, in fact, that there is an entire Wikipedia page titled Mozart and Scatology, filled with experts, historians, and scientists analyzing all the weird references he would make to poop in his letters and lesser-known psalms. For example, one letter he wrote to a cousin contained the poem, Well, I wish you had a good night, but first shit in your bed and make it burst. Sleep soundly, my love, into your mouth, my arse, you'll shove. He even wrote a musical piece, which translates to kiss my ass. If you're like Mozart, make sure to stick around and click the video we show at the end. Number 5. Mother Teresa If you look at most lists of best people who've ever lived, chances are Mother Teresa will make an appearance. Most hail her as the pinnacle of human kindness, as she even won the Nobel Peace Prize. Most of us were also probably taught that she was a true humanitarian, kind-spirited and charitable missionary who aided the sick and organized charity work. However, you might want to rethink what you know about her, because the truth is that she doesn't exactly deserve the world's love and admiration. Let me explain. Firstly, the houses for the dying that she ran tended to have appalling living conditions, and she often denied painkillers to patients, and there was a disturbing shortage of medical care, systematic diagnosis, and a severe lack of nutrition available for patients. In fact, this is rather hypocritical given that she accepted advanced Western medical treatment for her heart condition. What's particularly disturbing, though, is that her charitable foundation, Missionaries of Charity, accepted grants from dubious political contacts, like brutal dictators, and given the poor conditions at her eight houses likely siphoned off millions of donations, which were meant to be spent on helping the sick and helpless. It's likely this money actually went into the coffers of the Catholic Church. In fact, she even admitted once that I'm not a social worker. I don't do it for this reason. I do it for Christ. I do it for the Church. In short, she wasn't a humanitarian. She was working to expand the Catholic faith. Her allegiance wasn't with the sick, but with the Church. Number 4. Elvis Presley The king of rock and roll is an instantly recognizable cultural icon. He had the girls fainting in the audience before the Beatles and became an international sex symbol, thanks to his high energy, erotic dancing, and womanizing image. This sex symbol also met his wife when she was 14 and he was 24. He also groped a 17-year-old who happened to be the president of his fan club. Elvis was also known to throw pajama parties with teenage girls, where he would teach them how to style their hair and put on mascara, according to Elvis's stepmother. The womanizer also had a long affair with actor Nick Adams. Had more people being aware of the pajama parties, maybe they would have also been able to deduce that he wasn't entirely heterosexual. Number 3. Gandhi Mahatma Gandhi was the leader of the Indian independence movement, an independent movement that unlike a lot of others didn't involve trying to kill lots of people. Gandhi is world-renowned for this non-violence that inspired others, such as Martin Luther King J.R. Gandhi was also a huge pervert. He frequently bathed with women, who were much younger than him, and slept naked with his 18-year-old niece. He told her that it was the ultimate test of their purity. Despite all of this, Gandhi claimed to have lived a chaste life, which is obviously rather suspicious. His relationship with one medicine, however, makes these incidents look harmless by comparison. Although he let his wife die of pneumonia because he was against the use of penicillin, he himself accepted to use modern drugs to save himself from malaria. Just two years later, number two, Leonardo da Vinci. Leonardo da Vinci is known for basically everything you can be known for. He was an inventor, painter, sculptor, architect, scientist, musician, mathematician. He was an all-round polymath. He was also technically a criminal whose famous anatomical drawings were only made possible with crimes. At the time, dissection was totally illegal unless you were a doctor, which happened to be one of those few things that da Vinci wasn't. It is thought that da Vinci used grave robbers to obtain the bodies he used and he had to keep his research secret lest he be discovered. Perhaps you should consider claiming that you did what you did for the sake of scientific posterity. The next time you're caught stealing something. Number 1. Mark Zuckerberg The creator of Facebook, Mark inspired the movie, The Social Network, and is quite a rich person to say the least. In short, he is the penultimate entrepreneurial programmer. Zuckerberg is not, however, a particularly noteworthy programmer. You might be surprised to find out that he majored in psychology and is only ranked in the third level, on Top Coder, a website where programmers rank their skills. The initial version of Facebook was not very sophisticated and succeeded more on its premise than its remarkable code. 
For comparison, Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft, wrote the loader for Microsoft Basic on a flight to Albuquerque on a piece of paper, not a computer. There's a pretty widespread consensus of Mark's relatively low programming skills. Just read this feed on Cura and you'll get the picture. Were you surprised about the truth behind any of these people? Make sure to let us know in the comments. Also, please like and subscribe. Oh, and click on this video about poop. If you're anything like Mozart,